Hey there, curious minds. Have you ever wondered what self-knowledge really means in the world of psychology? Today, we're going to dive deep into this fascinating topic. Self-knowledge, as the term suggests, is all about understanding ourselves. It's the information we use when we ask ourselves questions like, what am I like and who am I? This process requires a healthy dose of self-awareness and self-consciousness. Now, don't let that term self-consciousness trip you up. In this context, it's not about feeling awkward or embarrassed. It's about being aware of ourselves, our thoughts, feelings and behaviors. Now, here's a fun fact. Did you know that even young infants and chimpanzees show some degree of self-awareness? Yes, you heard right. They can recognize themselves as distinct entities. But here's the catch. They're not considered to have self-consciousness. As we grow and develop, our cognitive abilities sharpen. This growth leads to the emergence of a self-conscious component that accompanies our increasing self-awareness. This cognitive development allows us to explore deeper questions about ourselves. We start asking, what am I like? And the answers to these questions, my friends, come from self-knowledge. This is where we start to understand our strengths, our weaknesses, our passions and our fears. Self-knowledge is a crucial part of our self-concept, which is essentially how we perceive ourselves. There are three primary aspects to this self-concept, the cognitive self, the affective self, and the executive self. The cognitive self, also known as the known self, comprises everything we know about ourselves. This includes our physical attributes, like our height or hair color, and our psychological traits, like our beliefs and values. So, to wrap up, self-knowledge is our understanding of who we are, built from our self-awareness and self-consciousness. It forms a critical part of our self-concept and helps us answer the crucial question, what am I like? As we grow and develop cognitively, a self-conscious component emerges alongside increased self-awareness, allowing us to explore this question and find answers through self-knowledge. The Scene Script Self-knowledge is a critical component of the self-concept which has three primary aspects. Let's start with the first aspect, the cognitive self. This is the part of you that is aware of your own existence and identity. It's the I am in your mind. The cognitive self encompasses everything you know about yourself, from your likes and dislikes to your beliefs and values. It's the mental image you have of yourself and it's shaped by the information you've gathered about yourself over time. The second aspect is the affective self. This is the emotional part of your self-concept. It's all about how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem, and your emotional responses to your own thoughts and actions. This component of self-knowledge is crucial because it can influence how we interpret and react to situations. Lastly, we have the executive self. This is the part of you that makes decisions and controls your actions. It's the I will in your mind. The executive self is responsible for setting goals, making plans and regulating behaviors based on the information provided by the cognitive and affective selves. Now you might be wondering, how do these three aspects interact? Well, think of it this way. The cognitive self provides you with the information about who you are. The affective self tells you how you feel about this information. And the executive self uses this information to guide your actions. It's like a well-oiled machine, with each part playing a crucial role in the overall function. So, to understand ourselves, we need to examine all three aspects of our self-concept. We have to reflect on our thoughts, feelings and behaviors and how they interact to create our unique self-knowledge. The cognitive self, also known as the known self, is made up of everything we know about ourselves. This includes physical attributes like hair color and psychological traits such as beliefs and values. Remember, self-knowledge isn't just about knowing your favorite color or your career aspirations. It's about understanding the complex layers of your personality, your emotions and your actions. It's a journey of self-discovery that helps us grow and evolve as individuals. And that, dear friends, is the beauty of self-knowledge. Now, let's talk about the connection between self-knowledge and memory. When we talk about memory, we're often referring to two main types, episodic memory and semantic memory. Episodic memory is much like a personal diary storing specific moments of our lives, from the joyous to the mundane. Semantic memory, on the other hand, is more like an encyclopedia. It contains general knowledge and facts that aren't tied to any specific experience. Now, here's where it gets intriguing. 
The information we store about ourselves, our self-knowledge, influences how we encode and recall events from our lives. Imagine your mind as a vast library, with memories stored like books on shelves. The way we categorize and arrange these books is influenced by our self-knowledge. Let's take an example. If you see yourself as a dog lover, you're more likely to remember events related to dogs, like the first time you adopted a puppy or that time you watched a heartwarming dog movie. That's your episodic memory at work, storing specific events that align with your self-knowledge. Semantic memory, on the other hand, is more about storing and recalling general knowledge and facts. For instance, you might remember that dogs are mammals or that they're known as man's best friend, but these facts aren't tied to a specific personal experience. But here's a fascinating twist. Even when episodic memory fails, as in individuals with amnesia or Alzheimer's, self-knowledge can still be retained. These individuals may struggle to remember specific events from their lives, but they often maintain a sense of who they are, including their personality traits and characteristics. This suggests that self-knowledge isn't solely dependent on episodic memory. It's like a resilient tree with roots that run deep. Even when the branches, the episodic memories are pruned or lost, the tree, our self-knowledge, remains standing. Our understanding of who we are isn't just about remembering specific events, it's also about the general knowledge and beliefs we hold about ourselves. So, why do we seek self-knowledge? Well, that's a question that has sparked many a fireside conversation and philosophical debate. But, in the world of psychology, it's a bit more cut and dry. There are three primary motives that guide us on this quest for self-understanding. First up is self-enhancement. This is our inherent desire to see ourselves in a positive light. It's about maximizing those feel-good emotions and minimizing the negative ones. It's the reason why we tend to gravitate towards people, activities and even thoughts that validate our self-image and boost our self-worth. In short, self-enhancement is all about feeling good about who we are. Next, we come to accuracy. This is the thirst for truth, the quest for an accurate and unvarnished understanding of ourselves. It's not always about hearing what we want to hear, but rather knowing the facts, whether they're flattering or not. Some people are driven more by this motive, valuing honesty over comfort. They seek the truth about themselves, their strengths, their weaknesses and their potential without any sugarcoating. The third motive is consistency. This is our natural tendency to protect our self-concept from change. We prefer information that aligns with what we already believe about ourselves. It's the reason why we often resist feedback that challenges our self-perception and why we sometimes struggle when faced with change. Consistency provides a sense of security and stability in our understanding of ourselves. So, there you have it. The three primary motives for seeking self-knowledge, self-enhancement, accuracy and consistency. Each of us may lean more towards one motive or perhaps we oscillate between them at different times in our lives. But regardless of the motive, the quest for self-knowledge is a journey that's as unique as we are. These motives shape the way we seek and interpret information about ourselves. And in understanding these motives, we gain a richer understanding of why we are the way we are and perhaps where we're headed next. To wrap up, self-knowledge is a fascinating and complex concept. It's the compass that guides us through the labyrinth of our minds, helping us understand who we are, what we're like, and how we perceive the world. It's a journey that starts from the moment we develop self-awareness, and it's an exploration that never truly ends. We've delved into the depths of self-knowledge, exploring its key components. We learned that it's a critical part of our self-concept, which is made up of three primary aspects, the cognitive self, the effective self and the executive self. Remember, the cognitive self is all about our beliefs and values, the details we know about ourselves, while the effective self concerns our emotions and the executive self is about our goals and plans. Our exploration also led us to the intriguing connection between self-knowledge and memory. We discovered that while episodic memory stores specific events and emotions and semantic memory contains general knowledge, Self-knowledge isn't solely dependent on our ability to recall specific events. Even individuals with amnesia can still maintain an accurate and detailed knowledge about themselves, which is truly fascinating. And then there are the motives that drive us to seek self-knowledge. Whether it's the desire for self-enhancement, 
the pursuit of accuracy or the need for consistency, these motives shape our quest for self-understanding. They guide us as we navigate the complexities of our minds, helping us make sense of who we are. But remember, self-knowledge isn't a treasure to be unearthed in a single moment. It's an ongoing journey, a continuous process of learning and unlearning, understanding and self-discovery. It's about asking the right questions, reflecting on our experiences and being open to new insights about ourselves. So, as we conclude our journey for today, I encourage you to continue exploring the intriguing world of self-knowledge. Dive deeper, ask questions and embrace the journey of self-discovery. Remember, knowing oneself is a journey, not a destination. So keep exploring, keep learning and keep growing. Until next time, stay curious.